Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest who you're going to love. It's Amros Pitri. He is here today, and he's going to give talk to you about a lot of great stuff pertaining to self-help and coping with a lot of issues that we all go through in life. Now, before we go, we discuss this, I want to just give a qu quick shout out to dmaworld.com. They are a marketing consultant agency who wants to help small businesses become big businesses. They don't believe in getting ripped off by these large marketing companies and they want to help you. So visit their website on dmaworld.com and Mark is the owner and he's there to help you. So check it out. Now I'm going to go back to my special guest because I'm very, very excited today. Amros, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do because I you you have some great information to share with our audience today. First of all, thank you, Stacy, for having me on your podcast as well. And it's a pleasure and it's a privilege as well to discuss our conversation through all this. Uh, in general, I'm a life mindset and emotional intelligence coach. And I've been helping people through my 15 years of experience uh, and guiding them through their struggles or their blockages to help them succeed or overcome their obstacles now you know i i feel it's so important because so many people are they fear change and you know everybody goes through obstacles in life first of all you know you can't you know everybody has a story to tell everybody has um obstacles in their life but some people have a hard time because when obstacles occur they get stuck they either are fearful of change or they have low self-esteem and they don't feel like they they can do it. Or some people even don't feel like they're worthy of doing, doing it. Now, the first question I want to ask is how, you know, before we get dive into this information, how did you start your passion for helping people and, for, and dealing with mindset and change and helping people overcome obstacles. Because I know for myself, you know, the, it, it's been a passion of mine for years. And, you know, I have a story to tell that drove me to that, that down that road. What's your story? Ooh, that's a real good question. <laughs> uh, uh, since I was 16, 17 years old, I always had the uh, constants to like help people in general if they like find solution etc cetera, etc cetera. but to be more specific i uh when i was 28 29 years old i when i was working as a waiter one of my colleagues were asking for advice etc and he they mentioned why don't you become a life coach and that's actually why i got into it more as a uh, let's say uh, as a job yeah. but it is my passion in ge uh, in general to help other people guide them because when you go through like you mentioned before different obstacles through life uh, i'll give you some more examples so before we dive into the conversation is uh through so a lot of people don't have the opportunity to go to college because of their different personal reasons money etc uh they then that's a big blockage for them. They don't know what to do, how to progress forward. Uh, going through a loss of their uh, family member as well, the parent, or even uh, illnesses that they have to overcome to be able to live their everyday life. So right. that's how everything started. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, you know, it's so important. You know, I, I feel like one of the the biggest accomplishment is being able to help other people. And, you know, I, you know, one of the things that I find is that, you know, a lot of people tend to be in denial when, you know, they have obstacles in their life. Uh, they just, you know, they, they kind of downplay it and they are in denial. Now, when you have a patient maybe, or a client who comes to you and they, they know that there's something wrong, but they really are still in denial. They don't really want to see it for what it is. They know that they have an issue they have to deal with. What's your advice for people who are struggling to let you, they, they know that something's not right going on. They know they have issues, but they're, they're really fighting with themselves because they're in that denial stage. They don't want to have to, you know, face, face the problem because they're scared. What do you suggest to those people? Uh, first of all, they have to make a decision for themselves. If they're willing to take that extra step, 
Because one of the issues that, as you mentioned, is the fear of change. When you're self-avoiding or you're self-aware of your issue that you have in your life, for me as a life coach, it's for me to show them being their mirror, let's say. They see it, but they have to make the choice, the effort to actually pro, uh, make the change and start implementing on a daily basis so they can see the change. The problem is, it's either, like you mentioned, fear of change, uh, their environment, like leaving behind uh, friends uh, or feeling judgment, people are going to start judging them. So they're still for mostly based on a, an insecure and the negative emotions that each person has that's keeping them stuck in their own emotions. Yeah. They can, oh, sorry, continue. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, different steps that they can take is actually uh, going for a walk just to calm themselves down, write down their emotions, what they're feeling at that moment, what's creating their problem, uh, and start creating an environment that they're able to make those change and start feeling those positive emotions of progressing towards and making that change. Now, you know, one, one of the things I, I find, you know, and with many people is that when you're, when you're going through a lot of stuff and you, you become negative, you tend to draw negative energy and negative people around you. And then what happens is those, those negative people suck more energy out of you and they kind of push you down with them. And, you know, how do you, you know, what's your suggestions of getting someone who is feeling negative, they, and has a lot of negative people in their environment, how do you, you know, teach them? And what are some suggestions you can give a person to change the negativity in their life and focus on the positivity? Because I kind of believe even with neg negativity, any anything that comes across us, any obstacle, we could always pull something positive. Well, I, I learned something from it. I gained strength. I gained resilience. You know, like what's your suggestions for someone who's going through a lot of negativity? How do we turn it around? I actually really agree. I agree with you because I have the same uh, perspective and how the when it comes to negative and positive energy. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like to use that as a sense, but it's the it's the beginning of the progress of changing your mindset to a positive mindset. Right. And from my life experience and the different clients that I actually uh, help is that. When you make that switch, you have to understand that each life experience, each situation brings you a lesson. Yes. So the thing is, but before you have to switch that mindset, you have to understand that you have to be self-aware of your problem, of right. your issue. And to be able to not change the mindset, but at the same time, set your boundaries when it comes to the negative energy that you're absorbing from the other people and from your situation so right. for me boundaries are very important as a beginning and being self-aware first of all do you um suggest to people if they have a lot of neg negative people in their life should they start kind of stepping back and trying to find let maybe look for new friends or you try to take a step back from those negative people even though that those people might be good people and they might have good hearts they are constantly in the negative, constantly thinking negative, talking negative, and then <sighs> kind of like we talked about sucking the energy out of you. So do you step back from those people? And what happens if they're family members too? You know, how do you, how do you start to put yourself in an environment where it is a positive environment, a strong environment, and an environment that has people that are going to kind of help you move forward in life and not pull you down? Uh, first of all, um, they have to understand it's not uh, it's not from one day gonna, to the second day it's going to change like this. No, not it's at a, all. You know, it's a process that's an everyday step. Like every, uh, you have to implement e different steps each day to actually build your confidence, your mindset, and to be able to progress in the direction that you want. First, my uh, suggestion is, my guidance is to actually be self-aware of your situation. Right. 
where, where you are right now, where you want to go. Right. The pe- Are the people around me or influencing me in a positive way to get to my point A, to my outcome that I want? Exactly. If not, if not, why am I still in my situation and start working towards it? When it comes to family and friends, it's a difficult situation because you don't want to let go of your family and your That's friends right. as well. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, every decision that you make, it's for your own good. So right. at the same time, if they have to understand and you have to understand that your decisions are for my own good. And you have to, like I mentioned before, is set those boundaries, those healthy right. boundaries. That mean, doesn't mean I don't love you as a person, et cetera, but I want to move fo- to forward and I don't like this negativity in my life, surrounding my life. Yes, definitely. So like, and then start creating a more positive environment for your own self. Uh, start more healthy habits, let's say. Uh, if some people like to work out or go for a walk, uh, listen to music, start reading books, and slowly, slowly, when you start implementing that, you start to feel real rejuvenated in the sense that my mindset is switching and change your perspective, like we mentioned before, from negative to positive. Like, okay, what's my lesson for this? I learned it. And become more resilient in every situation that you uh, get. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Now, you know, I I find too, like when I work with clients, you know, some people had said to me, you know, well, if you hear it so many times, because let's, for instance, I knew somebody who grew up with an alcoholic father and every time he drank, he put this person down. He kept putting this person down. This person developed low self-esteem because they said to me, well, you know what? After you hear it so many times, you tend to believe it. You know, so how do you get that person out of that mindset to make them feel that they're worthy and see themselves? Because everybody has a strength. Everyone has beauty. Everyone has the ability to better themselves and to become, you know, reach their full, full, full potential in life. How do you make that person realize that they are worthy and that they have the potential to make their dreams a reality? Well, yeah. That's unfortunate because a lot of uh, young adults or uh, adults in general are going through that situation. And it all comes down to that person. For, when I say he has to be self-aware of his situation is, okay, this is who I am. It does not make me my parents. And right. ha- in the sense that he has, to be so, he has to be aware of his situation, meaning, okay, if that person is... Uh, putting me down as uh, not providing me the software that I actually am, yeah. I have is what is, does he have the insecurities and he's probably putting it on me? Well, and at the same time, is he the example that I want to follow? Right. So if you sw- start switching when it comes at the same time, your mindset, find a person that you actually trust, ask for help, in the sense that they can guide you out of that situation in the being not less self worthy of let's say love or being asking more for yourself. Everybody has that. Everybody should ask for that. Yeah. Everybody deserves it. But it starts it starts with small steps. It's yes. like put put a small goal for yourself uh, mm-hmm. and start building on like so your momentum can change, your mindset can change and Find people, that's why one of the reasons is that build your environment. Like find people that actually am going, to, is, they're going to tell you, you're worthy. Just yes. do it. Because we don't, nowadays we don't have, we don't provide that to other people as well. Even to right. our friends or except. Where it's like, congratulations, like to motivate them, like keep going and stuff. Yeah. And, it's, uh, and it's causing issues to other people. Right. Exactly. Exactly. 
I think it's so important for people to realize that they have capability to be anything they 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 can possibly can. Now, do you have any type of do you, how do you feel about like maybe meditation, clearing the mindset, you know, and then maybe setting goals and things like that? Do you feel that is beneficial when you're trying to move from one point in your life to the next point and you're trying to overcome those obstacles? Yes, I do believe in them. Uh the thing is when it comes to a goal it's uh it's a hard aspect like if you start small it's for the other person that okay i i succeeded in that small goal so they can get the confidence that i actually can do it right it's not it's not putting them on a macro goal mm -hmm. and they get frustrated it's like you see i told you i'm not able to do that it yeah. doesn't it's like that's why I'm taking small steps first of all to build that momentum Right. Uh, when it comes to meditation, yes, I do agree. Some people feel do the meditation and feel more calmly, and mm -hmm. they are able to self evaluate their situation and see more clearly. Uh, other people like prayer, um, so I'm not holding anything against it. What works for them? For me, music as well. I pray. So it depends on the person. It's putting more positive habits in their everyday schedule to actually make them grow out of that situation that they're going through. Yeah, I love music. I think music is, is very therapeutic, even sound therapy, like, you know, when you can really just, you know, even close your eyes and just hear the words, hear the sounds of the music can really, you know, it can change the way the person's feeling. And it could also bring, I think, repressed emotions up, you know, depending on the type of music you're listening to. It just connects with your body. If the words are, or the sounds are matching your the emotions, it can sometimes just for some reason, it just changes your whole, your mindset and the way you're feeling. And sometimes just repressed emotions come out of nowhere and you come to a realization, the light bulb goes off like, wow. I just realized X, Y, and Z. How do you feel about that? No, I do agree because uh, through all, I recommend that to clients as well. And I realized that through my obstacles, my life experience that I went through, I, I used it for my own self because uh, it helps in the self of healing your past trauma or understanding yourself, uh, being self-aware of your emotions that are actually stopping you from uh, moving forward yeah and and one of the things that was back to that person that had an alcohol father and not doing the self worth is our upbringing environment our past that causing it and not comparing ourselves to that person right we are our own identity yes yes we, uh, and I try to implement that and speak that through uh, different clients as well, is that doesn't mean that your parents brought up, bring you to the person you are, 18, 20, 21, 30, 36, doesn't matter. It's you are your own person, your own yeah. identity. You build your character. You build. It doesn't end because your parents gave birth to you mm -hmm. or raised you as a person. So there's always, so basically there's always room for change, you know, no matter what you've been through in life, no matter what traumas that you've gone through, there's always room for change. If you're willing to, to want the help, the, the help is out there and the techniques and the, and the strategies are out there to turn your life around. We usually, we would just need a person to, that won't judge us, to listen yes. to us and guide us through that moment. And yes. motivate us. To, that's the only thing that we use, because we're lacking nowadays, and we're losing our humanity. Yeah, I think I. That's what I love about coaches is that you get that unbiased opinion, and you're they're seeing things from a different perspective than you are, or maybe your family, because maybe your family has similar upbringings, and you've been around them, and they keep you know saying the same things over and over and over again, depending on their upbringings and how they've been brought up. But when you go to a coach. You know, they have an unbiased opinion. They're not judging you. They're just listening. 
and just, you know, and just maybe guiding you a little along the way. And I, I think that's so important. And I think everyone actually could use a coach in their life for some aspect in their life, or maybe even more than one coach, depending on what you're going through and what you're trying to accomplish in your life. You know, it's, uh, I think coaching is, is, is a very important thing that everyone, you know, should have in their life because it, it could do wonders, I think, for people. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I remember years ago because we were by giving advice and things. I was like, and I was actually when I was noticing and being self aware of each person, and I was like, why aren't you changing? Why aren't you evolving? Why? Why don't? Why are you staying in this? And then when I grew, old, I, I was like, and I became a coach and I understood it in a different perspective. Like you, I was like, wow. In the sense that people actually don't know how to do it, or they don't have the strength, or they're they're stopping their own selves, like self blockages, to actually do that. So, I coaches in general, and if you have the right people around you to actually give you that extra push, it is very important nowadays. And I I think that's really important. And people have to realize too that you know you have to connect with the coach. So you know just because you're you're talking to a coach and they're on the same perspective and they can help you, you know you have to have that connection. I think connection is very important. You know, and and you'll know. I think when you have that right coach in front of you, you'll feel that connection. And once you have that connection with that person, it's amazing how much you know positive change could come about into your life you know yeah quality connection is is like one of the reasons that we have as a discovery call let's say a lot of people is to actually understand where that client is where that person is in their life at right more and that starts the relationship because you actually do feel that connection if you feel that vibe is like okay I think I can move forward with that person and and, all, and that's how the journey starts and yeah yeah, for sure. Now you do a lot of coaching. Like do you, you have discovery calls where you can like interact with someone and get to know the person? Yes. Uh, that's my, the first step. Uh, well, through my website, there's like six, six questions in like a different form that they have to answer. So I can get a little bit ready to understand a little bit of the situation. I have the discovery call. So in more depth to understand for them what a life coach is because there's a lot of people that don't know exactly what a life coach is and they right. mix it up with therapists and et cetera. So I understand them uh, and try to make them feel comfortable as possible to be able to continue uh, through their goals and whatever they want to succeed in life. And I think people have to realize too that, you know, you know, it's, it's sometimes, you know, you could be with a coach for X amount of months and sometimes you could you could have that coach for years, you know, because you have that connection, that person is going through life with you and they're just helping you along. They're listening to you. They're guiding you. They're kind of like your rock in a sense. And it's, it's, you know, it's, it's important to, to be able to speak to someone that you can just rely on trust and, you know, someone that's going to give you the proper guidance. And because in life, you go through obstacles and stress every single day of your life. And sometimes you just need that person, you know, that unbiased opinion just to help you along the way. Now, what is your website, by the way? Like, can you tell everybody the name of your website? Yeah, it's www.omiroscoaching.com. Uh, more information you can find it through my Instagram. It's at Omiros Coaching, O M I R O S Coaching dot com, and all the details are that. And I can create packages as well because I do have packages. If some people don't like the packages, but I recommend three months and over because in a month of a, a client doesn't see the change that quickly. So it's usually more as a prep for the client that three months and over is the best solution for them as well. 
Yeah. As a coach, I always feel like three months, you start to see the beginning of change. And then you really have to go into the six month area. That's when you start really seeing the change. And that's when you decide, you know, okay, do I want to continue this? Or, you know, do I, do I feel like I'm at that place where I, I don't need it? But most of the time I find people continue it because they're at such a good place and they want to continue to feel that good place, you know, and um, I also do the customized coaching like you, I think it's very important, because I think when it comes to coaching, you have to really customize, you know, to the person's needs, because everybody is different. How do you feel about that? No, I agree with you, because it de- it's like, you man, you have to customize it to the client's needs. If, uh, if their situation is different than your situation, it says that you were offered three months, uh, one co- a client, let's say, I wants two months. I'm not going to say no to that client because it's giving them the opportunity to see a different perspective, how they right. can see their life. Exactly. And it's also building a trust between us so they can see the results. It might not, they'll see the small results, but it's something that can motivate them to continue going forward. Exactly, exactly. Now you had mentioned to me prior before we started the um this the uh, podcast that you have a very special event coming up soon in New York. Can you tell me a little about that? It sounds really exciting when you're telling me about it. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, I'm very excited as well. Uh, it's me and uh, it's I and other three coaches as well. We're certified, and each person is going to be talking about their expertise uh, in regards to. We always hear the New Year's resolution uh, goals and a lot of people don't, they make them, but they break them at the same time <laughs> because they, they don't have the mindset, the consistency and the extra motivation to actually continue. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it's for us to help you create a vision for 2024 on the right and the correct foundation. And every aspect, I personally will be speaking about the emotional intelligence and how that plays a big role in our everyday lives and making our decisions when it comes to relationships or uh, our goals as well, because it makes the decisions what we would take to actually progress forward and right. to help us. If something negative has in it, comes into your life, for example, is to actually see, as, like we mentioned through our, uh, the conversation, see the, uh, the positive, the lesson, and build that momentum to keep you being consistent towards your goals and to be patient with your own self. It doesn't, it's not one day or another, it's a goal. So there's ups and downs. That's how life is. So they have to understand. It. Yes. So yeah. it, it's going to be on January 20th, on 20, uh, January 20th of the 2024. And all the information that you find it through my Instagram on, or through the website. And at my buyer, if they want to buy the t- they buy the tickets, and they're going fast, so it would be best to actually check it out. That sounds so exciting! I'm very excited for you. Now you have the the website, you have your services on the website. Now you have this speak at event that you're doing with three other coaches. Is there a, anything else that you provide? Any other services that you provide, or um, maybe in the future you're looking into doing certain things? Yeah, so one of the things in the down the line in the future is actually motivational speaker to actually uh, what I let's say what I'm preaching on a more private head to yeah. actually do it on a public stage. Yeah, it's one of the things that I would like to do as well. So. And, you know, a lot of coaches nowadays, they, they go into um, public speaking and they, they talk about motivational speaking because it's, it's so powerful, you know, and when you have someone like yourself that has so much to share on, on a topic that everybody goes through, you know, everyone has obstacles in life, doesn't matter what age you are, you know, everyone goes through obstacles in their life and it's just learning different you know, ways and different strategies on how to overcome those obstacles. So when you do have those obstacles, you could keep moving forward and not get, feel like you're getting knocked down, you know, every time you try to stand up. And that's so important. You know, it happens to people in their teens. It happens to people in their twenties. 
and 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. I, I even spoke, I spoke in an assistant living and then people were so excited because they're like, who doesn't have obstacles? Expe especially when you're older, you know, you have conditions and everything. You know, everybody was thrilled. So it doesn't really matter what age, you know? And I find too, and now in our society, there is so many young kids, they have so much more stress than we did when we were their age. And, you know, a lot of them are already, you know, stressed out and they don't know how to cope with a lot of stuff. And I think it's, it's important to have that person to talk to, you know, especially when you're young, because you don't want stress, you know, st stress is the leading cause for illness. It's the leading cause for, you know, people becoming depressed and, and anxious, you know, so it's, it's really, you know, something that you want to really, you know, knock it knock it out of the park while you can you know show you know those generations the z generation our generation you know the elder generation how to cope with stress because stress could kill you and that's we don't want that we want to live a happy healthy and positive life don't you think no i agree totally with you because it is the that's the killer ingredient for uh not living a life a short life let's say because anxiety and stress yeah. is is a bad it's a bad 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 ingredient it, it like i remember because uh, you mentioned like i had a young college client that he had anxiety stress uh, uh chasing after perfectionism yeah and uh, he asked for my guidance and I was giving him the guidance he was seeing it, and he was implementing it. And after three years, he feels more comfortable with him, his own self. He built his confidence. He's stress free. He understands that I have to make mistakes to grow, yeah. and et cetera. So, and he keeps thanking me. And by getting that feedback from that, per like you actually making a difference is a big success for you. So it gives you the motivation as a coach to keep going and yeah. changing those lives. I think the the biggest the greatest feeling in the world is being able to help another person, knowing that you, uh, you know, succeeded in accomplishing helping and changing another person's life is like one of the best things I think a person can can achieve in their lives. Knowing that they helped another person because it's just a a wonderful feeling. I I feel like you know most you know sincere coaches all all feel like that. That is true. No, that's one of a. That's our purpose, in let's say, in life is to actually help and guide uh, other people to find, to discover their full potential. So. so if you had to give, before we go, like maybe a couple of, of tips about everything we talked about today that, that can be really beneficial, if you had to wrap it up, a couple of takeaways, what would you suggest, you know, a couple of te takeaways for people? Uh, start the first thing is uh, start put, uh, implementing positive habits in your life, mm -hmm. either taking a walk each day, uh, listening to music, um, working out. Uh, other, you can start reading books and uh, start following people that act, uh, actually can motivate you and give you the extra steps to guide and to guide you to your goal and ask for help. Most yeah. important thing is ask for help right if you if let's set aside our pride let's set aside our ego and ask for that help is because the result will be a positive result at the end right and so my it's changing your mindset after each bad thing obstacle is say don't ask why just figure out what happened yeah take it as a lesson so it won't repeat itself right I think those are great takeaways, you know, and I think, I think what you mentioned is, is perfect because you, you want to work on the positivity, you want to work on your mindset and you want to make sure that you set things up. So you don't, you, you learn from your mistakes and you don't consistently do the same things over and over again. So I, I think those are, those are great takeaways. Now, can you tell everybody before we go, what your website is one more time and what your Instagram handle is? So they remember it so they can go visit you today. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's www.omiroscoaching at the, not a, <laughs> dot com. I repeat all of that. And my Instagram is at omirosecoaching. Uh, omirose, at omirosecoaching. 
Thank you so much. This has been amazing. And I, I hope you do come back on the show and we can hit some other topics related to, you know, what we've talked about today. But thank you so much for coming on the show. And I, I loved having you. Thank you. No, thank you for inviting me. Thank you for having me on the show. And it was a pleasure because I actually enjoyed this conversation and it went so beautiful. So, and uh, yes, I'll consider coming on again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much. This this has been a wonderful experience. I've learned a lot from you. So thank you so much. And, and I appreciate you greatly for everything that you do. Thank you. I appreciate you as well. Have a great day. You too as well.